Huber the Tutor by Harry A. Wilmer, M.D. List of characters in the drama. Villains. Huber the Tutor. Bovey. Nasty Von Spooton. Rusty the Bloody Bitch. Huey the Long Tutor. Gabbles. Gorn. Toja Tuber. Heroes. Corpuscle. Lipsky. Signal Corps. Military Police. Mechanized Forces. Infantry. Engineer Corps. Giant Sight. Huber the Tuber, Nasty Von Spootum, Rusty the Bloody Witch, Huber the Long Tuber, and their friends left their old home. It was a hurried departure and quite involuntary, but they were carried away in a, the breath of a moment. During the cough, they left on some droplets of moisture. They were inhaled by an unsuspecting house. Huber, large for a jay, is always a leader. Slid down one pipe first. Suddenly he bumped his bottom on the bottom. He sat scratching his head, puzzled over which of the two branch line airways to explore. When all at once the tubers are swept from the left airway by a deep breath. Heber and his friends, who like all tubers are hard to shake, got jammed into an air sack. This was Lungland, but all the tubers were so crowded that something had to be done. The zoning laws had never taken account of tubers and, a, and living room was not provided for them. Nasty Von Spootum, a virulent tuber, started slashing his sword around and shouting, Give me ear as he cut into another ear sack. Rusty the bloody bitch wanted to throw his bomb into the long attic to make a cavity bear off the around him. Huey the long tuber paced up and down on Huber's stomach, screeching atop of his lungs, Every tuber a king, build your castles in the air sacks, eat your way to posterity. Huber, a conservative of the mild stream, stood up and shouted, An air sack for everyone. This simple solution had never occurred to the other tubers. They, of course, were stupid compared to Hoop. Huber. All the screeching tubers had been unaware that they had attracted the other inhabitants of Longland. For that matter, Huber was the only one who gave any thought to the fact that their noisy discussion might irritate the original occupants of Longland, who naturally had high priority reading and checked to any intruder. The signal corpsman, mercenary white blood cell soldiers hired by the Home Guard Army, detected the tubers. Not knowing the nationality of the invaders, they broadcast the word the length and breadth of Lungland foreign bodies. After Huber had won the attention of all the tubers, he told them, Don't blow a cavity, don't cut the line up. Everyone can have a hair sack to himself. Chew slowly, enjoy yourself, and eat yourself out of house and home. If you start a lot of trouble, you will beat the Home Guard Army. Beware of Corpuscle Lip Lipsky, the chief of the Home Guard. So, my friends, if we build homes of calcium stones, all will be well. We don't want a big spread. We do not want familiar military aggression. We want peace and quiescence. Huber had won them all over. He was elected chief goon of Tuberville the first. Tuber took from mayor of the town. They all started working on through the tuber settled down in the calcified section. Huber, whose spotless home life endeared him to the conservative voters, had a copy of the magic mountain and settled down on his doorstep to read it. Soon he fell asleep and slept for twenty tuberculiers. But while he slept, all was not well in Tuberville. Having caught their chief goon napping, the virulents got together to plan a new order for Longland. Nasty von Spootum was all for a military spread, and the sooner the better. He was not satisfied with quietence. This peace was driving him wild. He told them there were special plans for a big spread, a familiar military affair. Rasty the Bloody Bitch was all for throwing his bomb, but the others persuaded him to wait for more explosive times and to first bore from within. Before they could do anything, they had to get rid of Huber because he was a conservative. With Huber out of the way, they could infiltrate all over Longland. Thus, they plotted and played while Huber slept. If they could only get rid of the chief goon. The opportunity that Nasty, Rusty, and Huey had been waiting for came at last. The host went on drinking spree, staying out all hours of the night and smoking incessantly. Because Huber lived on the corner of Broncos and Maine, the smoke was inhaled past him first, and he awoke on the verge of suffocation. Nasty von Spooten brought Huber a glass of fresh, cold tissue juice to drink and told him it would stop his cough. But the soft drink was spiked with blood alcohol tapped from the drunk host, and Huber, who usually drank only socially, passed out. Rusty the bloody fish propped him up by the airway, and Huey the long tail pulled the nerve mark for emergency exit only. This caused the host to cough, and poor Huber was blown up the airway. The radicals congratulated themselves. The coup d'etat had been a success.
When he, Huber woke up, he had a terrible hangover. After a struggle to keep both eyes open at once, he found himself sitting at the bottom of the windpipe again. This is where I came in, he said, and started to stand up, but his legs were as weak as his memory of the night before. Huber was almost in tears when suddenly a pretty little girl, Huber, coasted demurely down the windpipe to his side. She did not look like any girl he had known, but he slid over next to her boldly asked, What's your name? I'm Miss Bovine Bug, she said, but my friends call me Bovine. I'm only a country tuba girl. My home was Utterville, but I took a milk train out and came here across milk. I'm really an ignorant miss, but I love you. If you were one of those blank since last night, Bowie's one of those blank since birth. He asked her to marry him because he had finished reading the magic milk. The honeymoon traveling down the Tuberville Trail into the end of the big airway. When they came to Tuberville the first, everything had been changed. There's a border guard behind a barricade of lymph nodes. What's the meaning of this? blustered Huber, who knew all the time that trouble had started. You can't enter Tuberville. There is a battle going on inside. On Corpuscle Nelson of the Body Moon Forces, with strict orders to keep all snooping tubers out. Scat, scam. Gibby came huffy and told the guard that he was Chief Goon of Tuberville, but this just made Corpuscle Nelson laugh loud and long. We know what you tubers have been doing all the time. The signal corps had you spotted the moment you first evaded. The immune forces have all from the under guard. Hubert, who had been schooled in diplomacy as well as politics, tried a new approach. Oh, Corpus Gold Nelson, he said. I never do your duty as you see it, and I've always admired you. You're so handsome and strong. I'm only a conservative tuber, and both of you are on our honeymoon. Won't you help us? This did the trick, and the guard, in a moment of weakness, confided to him that up at the very top of London, the immune forces were not yet on guard. This, Corpus Gold Nelson said, he had all on the best authority. Hero was never one to question authority. He led Bovey to an airway, and they were inhaled to the very top of Longland. But Hero's past life in Tuberville reared its ugly head, in fact, two heads. These were spies called Gobbles and Gorons, and were spent by Nasty von Sputum. While Bovey and Huber were making love, Gobbles and Goron went about their sinister business. The plans for the new order called for a big cavity, and Gobbles, Gobbles, and Goron, Goron. Thus, they had a big cavity and would have made it bigger had not Huber suddenly looked up and seen them. The spies quickly jumped out of the small airway head first. But the damage was already done. Heber wanted to build this cavity into a major line of calcium stones, but all Bovey wanted to do was make goo-goo eyes. They cauterized and made goo-goo eyes. Married life in an attic wasn't all it was supposed to be, and Huber soon realized that his young helpmate wasn't ready to settle down. Bovey discovered that the blood stream ran right onto her living room, without a worry all that the living room might settle. She remembered all the fun she had swimming in the lovely clean streams at, at Utterville. Bovey told Huber she wanted to go waiting, but Huber said he would have none of such nonsense. The current is so fast, he told her, that she would not be able to resist the capillary attraction. One day, while Huber slept, things always happened while he slept, she had a small piece of lung so she could go waiting in the bloodstream. Huber had been right. He always was. No sooner had she put her big toe in than her head followed. There was an awful loud slurp, and it woke Huber up. All the fluid was gushing in from the swimming hole Bovey dug in the floor. Help! He cried. The fluid level was rapidly rising, but he read other books besides the magic mountain. Remember the story of the little Dutch boy who stopped the leak in the dike with his finger? Huber held his finger in a leak until all the fluid had drained out. The neighbors below didn't complain about the dripping fluid, but worked on the host. He was on landlord since the tubers don't pay rent until he coughed it all up. Well, Huber was fretting very lonesome of that as Bovey. She was washed in the bloodstream. Finally, she washed ashore in a southern city called Synovia. This is in a foreign country, very different from London. Look at a small isthmus between those strange tropical countries of Fomoria and Tibia. Bovey did not know the ways of a big city, and she ended up in a joint. Everyone drank so much joint fluid that the whole joint got stiff. And there, Bovey still languished, separated from the man she loves. A horrible example of what happens to adventurous wives, even in London. Huber couldn't shake memories of Bovey in the old cavity and tried to develop an outside interest. He collected some tubes and built a radio set. When he turned it on, they started on this testing, testing, the announcer called man, two, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, that is all. That meant trouble. The host must have worried when all the fluid killed and gone to see doctor. He was right, naturally. The doctor had applied a man, two test, which was positive. All tubers were allergic to the horrible word, man, two. An X-ray picture was taken. Huber would have objected, but he wasn't consulted. He was hopping mad because he couldn't get life insurance anymore. No tuber life insurance will issue a policy after an X-ray picture has been taken. Even though Huber was a little out of focus, the picture showed a terrible mess in Lungland. In the middle of the cavity, Huber said scratching his bumping his breath. Doctors are censored. 
The host was ordered to bed immediately. This is bad news for all. She was to give the home guard the chance to completely mobilize. A warrant for Hubert's arrest was issued. Similar ones were issued for each cheaper. As soon as Corpuscle lift, Ski heard that the host was in bed, he summoned the commanding Corpuscle of each branch of the army. The only sergeant in the home guard was murdered years ago, and since that the highest rank is in Corpuscle. The branches of the army are Signal Corps to locate the tubers, military police to arrive at the scene of trouble first, also hired white cell soldiers. Infantry to destroy the tubers, mechanized forces to bolster resistance, antibodies, immune bodies, and engineer corps, which is near the fleeing tubers in Bardlard and imprison them in calcium jails. The military police, MP, carrying guns and bayonets, trapped Hubert in his attic hole. The cavity was so big, they could not quite reach him with their bayonets, but poor Hubert could not move. In this way, they threatened the fugitive with starvation. I'm surrounded, Hubert cried. That evening, a terrific wind began to blow. The longer the wind blew, the more the attic shook and gradually the walls and ceiling moved closer to him. Just as Hubert was trying to make his old life flash before his eyes as he was supposed to do, the wind quieted down and things stopped closing in on him. Hubert was very smart. He knew the doctor had put a needle in the chest wall and was pushing air in the space from the lung. The type of windstorm is called a cyclone in London. Huber had once heard the doctor call it a pneumothorax, putting those building inflation put on by a period of unrest. He was just about pinned in by the military police. If the ceiling or walls came any closer, he would suffocate. At best, he would die from want of something to eat. At worst, the antibodies might eat him. Be fed or be food? That was the question. He began to bed when the MPs seemed slightly relaxed, no doubt overconfident. He kicked two of them in the teeth and yelled, Fire! This affront took so much aback that they escaped that he escaped in a split second by way of an indication. He gasped in relief as he took stock of things to come while sleeping on indication in the Grand in the Great Pearl Canyon. Suddenly a bright light came through the chest wall on the end of a periscope. It twisted and turned until it spotted the adhesion that Hooper had been sitting on. He jumped back behind the other teachers and was nearly scared to death when a horrible animal, perhaps an alligator, came through the chest wall beside the periscope. With red hot teeth, he seared the adhesions in two. When the last adhesion was, was severed, the lung suddenly fell away down as it received from the chest. There came into view a lake at the bottom of the grand, the great pearl came fluid here, slammed as he did a neat swan dive into the water. But Huber should have looked before the lake slammed rapidly toward them was a phagocyte shark. It was almost upon Huber with its ugly teeth showing when a girl because I was hurt and the lake went dry. Sitting inside just at the wall. Sticking in the chest just wall at the bottom of the great pleural canyon was a big needle drying off the fluid. The tuber eating shark flopped foolishly, and Huber hastened to take credit by casually standing on its head and whistling. But Huber was worried the late one before him to get that would revive the shark. He had to get out of the canyon quick. The quickest way out of the canyon was by way of the lower lobe L, lymphatic crap in transit system. He found the entrance of the side of the lung and after paying his fare, opened the valve leading to the L. Surrounding the entrance were lymph nodes, the sight of which was repulsive to Huber. In fact, he did not like traveling by the L because it was a bump that nevertheless had sort of irresistible attraction for him. As he came near the trip, he heard a lot of shooting and yelling. He came to the great battlefield where Nasty von Spudum and his tubers were locked in a life and death struggle with the home guard. The first thing to beat Huber's eyes was a giant cell captured by the panzer pincers. These are fan f fanatical youngsters led by T Toja Tuber, the field strategist of the tubers. He had taught them to pinch the pants of the home guards since this was their weak spot. At the extreme rear of the battlefield, Nasty von Sputon was in his bomb-proof, sound-proof dugout directing the war over the TBS, Tuberculosis Broadcasting System. 
A draft from Zack planning a spread to the promised land alone. Nasty required all two to sell him in his great presence. Toad Retriever led the Panzer Pincers in a surprise rear attack against a squad of infantry home guard advancing up a hill. As soon as the home guard dodged and threw up their arms, the two would knife them in the back. Unsuspected by the Panzer Pincers was a signal corpsman stationed as a lookout on top of the hill. Immediately he mediated help, calling mechanized forces. Without a second's delay, Corpuscle Lips. Lipsky dispatched the mechanized forces, the immune bodies and the antibodies. Under the command of Corpuscle Nelson, they raced at breakneck speed to the scene of trouble. It was an easy attack for them to rout the panzer pincers. The infantry then came and killed all the T-rays that said Tojo Tuber. They called the engineer corpse for him. The engineers captured Tojo Tuber and immediately surrounded him with barbed wire, which they pulled very, very tight because some tubers have been known to escape when it is loose. Corbusco Lipsky himself came to direct the molding of the calcium prison. Huber, in the meantime, had been walking behind the tuber lines and came to a big post around which gathered a group of parachute trips. Headlines read, Nasty Von Spooder speaks today, Unter den Cavity Number 3, Parachute Trips. It was obvious at once to to hear it, that these parachute troops were going to be sent out into the world to spread Nasty's mission of destruction. Hoover, that conservative, objected to any such barbarian methods. By following the parachute troops, Hoover came to Unter den Cavity no Number 3, which formed a great natural amphitheater. Long banners hung behind the speaker's platform. On them was SK for Speedskrieg. A great shout arose as Nasty entered. He began to speak and the audience became deathly silent. Parachutists, he roars, deafening applause. We are about to shoot you from a special tuber shooting gun. You will leave Lungland, travel the areas tonight, and go out the windpipe. When you reach the outside, pull your parachute cord and float the air. A spread for every lawn, deafening applause. Go forth and infiltrate. You go along you can. Weaken your victim. If there is danger, lay low until the time comes. That's right, deafening applause. As the applause died down, everyone left the cabin. Once outside, Hewer followed the parachute chips. They came to a special tuber shooting gun and lined up for their turn to be shot up the windpipe. Hewer could not hide his rage just before the candle started to jump upon some powder kegs. Fellow tubers cried, Nasty Bones Pluto spending on a false mission. The soldiers were so astonished they simply stood and listened. Your mission, he continued, is not to cause trouble in your new homes and distant land, it is to settle down and live in comfort. You could even infiltrate a little at first, but live in peace and quiet. I protected you hopes of further invasion. From without. Huber was hastily removed by the secret police. He was brought to Nasty's secret office and asked to explain his treason. Treason, he rebelled. I want your son, but you don't know it. You're directing this world wrong. The home guard already has you surrounded. If you had listened to me in the first place, this never would have happened. So here the Huber is smarter than I am, Nasty sneered. How would the great Huber fight this war? In the first place, you can only win at such a terrible expense that it won't be worthwhile, for you must completely destroy all the long land. Then you won't have no place to live. The only hope is for an armistice or a truce based on the status quo. Bah, truce, that's no fight, Nasty told him, shaking his finger in Heber's face. Just then, there was a distant rumble of artillery, which grew louder and louder until the noise was terrible. Nasty and his aides rushed off to see what happened to him, and they locked you in the office. Crash, rumble, crash, boom. He looked the assault with broken ribs. The doctor was taking some ribs out of the house, and that meant a permanent depression would set in. Huber looked out the barred door and saw all the tubers of Nasty von Sputum's army slid up and caught in feathers bands and adhesions are forming everywhere. The military police were mopping up the suffering, starved tubers. Nasty's office trembled. Just heard the walls crashed in, Huber escaped out the ventilating airway. Huber found his way back to his old calcium stone air set and crawled in. The depression was catching and crushing the other tubers and leading to a big victory for the home guard army. But Heber's shelter survived the depression since it was stolid stone and unmortgaged. With a little worry about outside affairs, Heber settled down to the ideal life for a conservative tuber. He slept and sleeps still, but Heber still died. Maybe if he scattered tubers of the violent strike and escaped some other fortified air sacs, they will live imprisoned in calcium because the home guard will prevent their escape with barbed wire. Chief of the home guard Karpusko Lupski summoned 
all his army together, and there's a great celebration. Bagpipes with their squeaks and wheezes, drums with their booming, horns with their oom pa pa, and trumpets with their clearing calls announced the end of the war. Karpusko Lipsky called out, Victory, victory, victory! It is ours! We have defeated the tubers! Those whom we have not killed are our prisoners of war. So long as we keep them in jail, then Longland is free! Long live Longland! Alright, good job. Thank you very much.